Hi. Well, um, this is just a little video I thought I'd make about these two small boxes you see in front of here. They are actually low powered headphone amplifiers, um, but unlike your normal headphone amplifier, which is just, you know, in most cases, just a couple of op amps driving the headphones directly, um, the CMOI, I think they call it, something along those lines. Um, and then you get, you know, slightly more advanced ones where there might just be a small set of output transformers running as emitter followers, unity gain, just as current buffers. Um, these are a bit different. These were actually knocked up uh, as an experiment about using just general purpose small toroidal power transformers as an output transformer. Um, these are all transistor. Uh, this is the first one I built. Uh, it's got just screws sticking out of the box so it's on this block of wood to stop it destroying my table and this is the second one it's um, slightly more refined slightly smaller both of them work incredibly well uh, far better than I ever expected put it this way they started off as an experiment and as you can see they've ended up getting built into boxes because they work so well so um, anyway we'll uh, pop the tops off them and uh, have a little look at what's inside so um this is the first one I built. Pop the top off. Uh, you have a look in there. Uh, sorry, lighting's not very good in here, so it's not going to focus in on this very well. Um, but yeah, these are just a couple of toroidal power transformers. They're dual 120 volt primaries, uh, dual 6 volt secondaries. So the primaries are basically running with push pull, um, center tapped, and the secondaries which are the six volts are actually running um, to two headphone jacks you can see here but well, that enables me to drive both low and high impedance headphones uh, and actually I was testing these testament to how robust a design it is for such a simple design if I use the bottom jack I can actually run a set of six ohm loudspeakers um, not very loud, obviously it runs it about a quarter of a watt or something, but it will run them without distorting um, because obviously you're getting the current transformed in the output transformers from a few milliamps in the output stage um, to, you know, the much higher current but a lower voltage you need to run the speaker. Now, um, like I say, I do apologise for lighting in here. Um, we'll try and get a bit closer if we can. So, yeah, you, you can just see um, there's not really a lot going on on that board. It is basically <coughs> just a set of small signal transistors fed from a current sink running as a long tail pair as the input stage on the left and right board. And that's direct coupled from both collectors to a second long tail pair running off a second current sink which the collectors of which connect to each output transistor giving us left and right. Uh, the power supply is just a small EI core. Um, you can see there's bridge rectifier tucked away down there. Got a couple of filter caps, some resistors, so we've got some RC filtering between the stages as an additional level of filtering the output stage transformer connects to there. And there's a couple more RC stages for the input. Um, it is incredibly simple design, um, worked, I mean I had it on the workbench and I just couldn't believe, I plugged a set of speakers into it and it, it just worked. Uh, I put it on my oscilloscope running various frequency sweeps, it was completely flat from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, there was no sort of rises in the output, no drops, it, it was just completely flat and uh, doing spectral analysis on the oscilloscope it varies frequencies, you know, sort of second and third harmonic distortion is about 60 dB below the fundamental level. So it is um, far better than I expected. I mean, if you don't know a lot about transformers, you couldn't use an EI core as an output transformer, just a standard power one. You'd have one winding for your primary, one winding for your secondary, there's just a small bit of insulating material, possibly paper, whatever, between them. The core will saturate uh, at low frequencies if you try pushing it too hard, but you, because the, they're not, you know, 
the laminations aren't made up of very good material. It's not designed for this wideband frequency response. It's not designed to be low distortion. Um, and you just get massive amounts of leakage as you up the frequency. A frequency response would be very poor. It just wouldn't work. Um, because a toroidal core, because the windings are wound over each other and the whole core is basically a donut. You, you don't have these poles like on an EI core, you know, is, is your windings around around these laminations you have huge amounts of leakage which comes out of various angles and stuff on it which you just don't have uh, with a toroidal core um, and as a consequence of that even a very poorly wound toroidal core will allow quite a wide band frequency response it doesn't make it a low distortion if you try to drive a toroidal core from a high impedance source um, and you know, wasn't using negative feedback throughout the whole amplifier. You would get output out of it, but uh, it would be all over the place, and it would be very poor. There would be a lot of harmonics generated. Some people might like the sound of it. I wouldn't. So um, that was Mark One. Uh, let's go over to Mark. So this is Mark Two. Let's pop the lid off. You see, slightly smaller. As you can see inside, you look at the difference between Mark One. Mark II, you can see a very similar layout. Um, let's just lift the camera up so you can do a bit better here. So you can see very similar layouts, but the main difference is the circuit board is tiny. I actually have one of the boards here. Uh, knocked it up uh, on my laptop on generic circuit board making program. Um, sent it off, it got uh, manufactured by Oshpark. If you've never used them, I suggest you go and have a look at them. They are fantastic. You just pay a couple of dollars per square inch on one board and you get three boards sent to you for that price. Dual sided, through plated, gold plated, solder mast. Uh, you know, for the price you pay, um, I just can't recommend them enough really. They are fantastic. So. As you can see, obviously this board I had knocked up. This one was one I knocked up on the computer and made myself the old fashioned way with ferric chloride etchant and a Dremel drill and many hours of messing about, but it's all part of the fun. Um, as always, you only notice the mistakes you've made when you finally get your boards back and start putting stuff in them. So um, main difference being on this board, I'm focus in on it, it's a couple of packages here to 92 packages those aren't actually transistors they are voltage regulators it's just a small 100 milliamp 7 oh what are they tl713 the, the to 92 case version i think that's what they are um yeah just positive 100 milliamp voltage regulators so they take over from the rc filtering that was used on the first amp uh, they make for a far far quieter supply um, fixed a few errors as well um, you can't really see it but big mistake I made and I, I can't you know I'm, I'll openly admit I'm not perfect I make mistakes I've been building amps and stuff for a while now but I still get things wrong occasionally it's how we learn headphone amplifier obviously you've only got one ground on the output so if you've got a symmetrical supply if you're not using the star earthing scheme if you're using the um, signal follows ground scheme well if you've mirror imaged your board off of that at some point you end up with both your outputs and your inputs grounded together because obviously you have to ground your input signal wires together through your rca jacks and if you don't ground them there they will be grounded at the source anyway and of course you've grounded your output wires together well if you've not taken that into account it's very easy to create a situation where you can induce a small if loop induced hum. I say induced a lot there. Anyway, that is exactly what I did on the first amp. Um, it is only minor, it's not too much of a problem if you're listening to a set of over ear headphones or on ear headphones, you can't hear it. It's only if you've got a real small set of, say, like iPhone headphones shoved right in your ear that you're going to notice it. <clears throat> and realistically, you don't go to the trouble of building an amplifier like this. Uh, and then just using a set of iPhone headphones, you might as well just plug them straight into your telephone. Do you know what I mean? Um, so uh, I'll just do a quick sketch of what's basically going on in here. I can't remember the exact component values. I sort of make a lot of this stuff up as I go along. 
Um, I have a basic design. As you're building it, you end up testing it. Things aren't quite where you want them, so you order a few bits and bobs, and eventually you've got it all built, and yet again, no schematic. And I must admit, I do have a lot of things I've built kicking around here, which I've got no schematics for. So every time I take them apart, if something goes wrong, I end up having to reverse engineer them to try and figure out what it was I did five, six years ago when I first built them. But uh, I can draw you up a basic schematic of uh, what we've got here. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, this is basically what uh, the amplifier entails. This is incredibly bare bones. It's missing various bias networks. It's missing resistors out. It's, it's just giving you a, a basic representation of what we've got here. So, got our power supply, bridge rectifier, some smoothing capacitors, two voltage regulators. Well, the higher voltage, uh, it's about 35 volts, comes out of the first regulator and that goes to the um, center tapping point where the two 120 volt primaries are joined together on the toroidal output transformer. There's then a second level of voltage regulation takes it down to about 18 volts and that goes to the input stage. So there's incredibly quiet power supply for the input stage. Um, signal comes in, obviously these transistors are biased by constant current sinks a signal comes in here, it modulates the current through this transistor. And because these two are tied to the same current sink, the current between them has to mirror. Uh, if these two resistors are the same value, it generates the same amount of voltage on either resistor. And that in turn drives an exact equal but out of phase signal to the two output transistors. So signal comes in, drives these two transistors. The two output transistors are driven. Um, they obviously modulate the current between each side of them uh, to the two separate windings on the output transformer. The output transformer steps the voltage down but steps the current up and, and the small amount that is fed back to the base on this input transistor is negative feedback. Um, the amplifier will actually run if you remove the feedback connection because everything's a mirror image self-biasing topology the way it's laid out it will run it runs with an incredibly high amount of gain and a lot of noise and a lot of distortion but it will actually run um so yeah that's just a bare bones basic look at what's going on inside them so yeah not a very technical video i know I'd, I'd like to go into more detail but unfortunately like i said i don't really have the schematics um I don't have a great deal of anything left on them anymore. They've, they've knocked up this one I knocked up about a month ago. And the other one I knocked up sometime in the summer. Um, but again, you can just see we've got a power con connector, fuse. That's going through to switch. So that switches the 240 volt mains for our transformer here. That's then going into this mess down here. You can't see the rectifier and everything's tucked away on the board in the corner there and then this board is split that is one channel of the amplifier and that's the other channel it's a it's a mirror image topology but i've laid it out better this one won't create ground loops if you're really getting close you can start to see i've gone with the good old-fashioned signal follows if setup. So the very first thing to get the zero V signal is obviously the output stage and then the output stage transistors and you slowly work your way along so as you get to the very end of it you're just connecting signal ground to the zero V rail and there's no current flowing for it whatsoever. Then that in turn on both boards every section as you go along tees back to a star point so there's no differentials created. You've got no voltage differentials you'll have no current loop it's simple as that. This is immensely quiet I mean I can put just like I said a cheap pair of iPhone headphones in even the high output impedance socket where any noise is greater. Um, I can turn the volume flat out I can hear nothing there's just the gentlest of gentlest of hisses whereas this one here um, she does make a bit of hum. This one actually, a bit of the hum is coming from the transformer as well because the transformer is sitting this way on and the wires are this way on. Um, it seems to, I mean, if I push these, I've had to pull these as far away as I can. If I put the nearer I get these wires to the transformer, the more hum it picks up as well. Um, 
You can see I've, the transformer is tucked well away on this one. It's as far away from it as possible. EI cores kick out huge amounts of magnetic field. Um, they're terrible for leakage flux. Toroidals do it. They do it a lot where the wires come in and out. It's two different topologies. They both have advantages and disadvantages over each other. But the main one being here, that this was just an experiment to see if you could use a standard power transformer as an output transformer. It turns out... In a low power application like this, you certainly can. Um, I was going to do it as a valve amplifier. Um, and I might well do one at some point. But obviously, again, with headphone levels of power, you're just not modulating the huge voltages you are with a proper valve power amp. The closer you get to the voltage rating of the core, the higher distortion you get because you're putting more magnetic flux into the laminations of the core, they're reacting more. It's a non-linear process. So in this instance, um, like I say, somewhere about 30 to 35 volts. So it full output power, if one side of the transistor on the output stage is driven into saturation, just as the other one is turning off, um, there'll be about 70 volts across a 240 volt wire. And you can see it is no way near its peak of 340 volts it would be getting if it was connected to the mains. It's having a really easy time. Um, so again, if I was to do it with a small valve amp, it would have to be a low power one. It would need to use something like, uh, I say even EL84s really would need too much voltage. EL86s are a, a sort of a lower voltage version, higher current. Um, you know, but as a push-pull, you certainly couldn't do it single ended. As a push-pull small amplifier, you wanted maybe four or five watts out of. Um, it is an option, uh, and so hopefully at some point I will be able to bring you a video on that. Um, but for now, yeah, just a little simple something. If you want to have a toy around, if everyone ever says to you that there's absolutely no way you can ever use an output transformer, I mean a power transformer for an output transformer, well, it might not be the best way of doing it. I'm certainly going to say you're never going to outperform a proper interleaved and properly wound output transformer with a power transformer, but with a few design precautions taken into account and a good dollop of negative feedback, it is certainly possible. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll be coming back at you with something more interesting again sometime soon.